celebrating our 20th season. From the College by the Lake, meeting the personalities and discussing the issues that affect all of Court Lane and the Inland Northwest, we are the North Idaho College Public Forum. And now, here's your host and moderator, political scientist, Tony Stewart. This is a very special occasion for the North Idaho College Public Forum. As I've indicated a number of times this year, this is our 20th year of broadcast, and 18 of those years have been with KSPS TV Channel 7 in Spokane, Washington. And the reason it is so special for me personally, as well as Janelle Burke, our panelist, is that we have come together today to celebrate uh, and to congratulate KSPS Channel 7 for their 25th year on the air. Uh, for you who are, have not followed that all that time, on April the 24th, 1967, KSPS uh, joined other stations broadcasting here in Spokane and the Northwest. Uh, we have three guests today who have played a very major role in the, that very successful uh, 25 years. I would like to welcome to the program, first of all, Claude Kissler, who is the station manager at this very successful PBS station uh, in Spokane. Claude, it's been a pleasure working with you all those years that we have been affiliated with Channel 7, and we do want to congratulate you for a very, very successful station. Thank you. And I'm very and equally happy to have on the program Bill Stanley, who's also worked with us all those years, uh, and even before we joined uh, Channel 7. Uh, Bill Stanley is the Director of Programming and Operations. Uh, and Bill, congratulations to you. You've made a wonderful team and had great success at Thank the you, station. Tom. And I'm equally uh, happy to welcome to the program Mr. Ron Miller, who was a charter board member of Friends of Seven. And Mr. Miller, it's because of the financial work and support that the Friends of Seven have done and people like you that's made it possible to have such quality programming at Channel 7. And I also congratulate you for all Thank those you. years of work that you've put in. Uh, as we go through this program today, we're going to talk about why this is one of the most outstanding PBS stations in America. I can testify to that fact. I've seen some of the Nielsen's ratings in the past, and as far as per capita population, it's one of the best viewed stations in the United States that's affiliated with PBS. I am so pleased, as I said, to welcome Janelle Burke, who's been a regular panelist, 17 of our 18 years with Channel 7, and we shall ask her to commence the questioning today. Well, welcome to the program. This is a special occasion commemorating the anniversary of KSPS in the Spokane and the Northwest. I'd like to start with Claude. Most of us watch television on a regular basis, and we know that there are a lot of people behind the scenes who make the programs possible. Can you tell us a little bit about your job, and then would you also include one highlight, one thing that you think is especially important about your job? Okay, I'll start a little bit about the job. Basically, as the general manager, I like to tell people it's my job to stay out of people's way and let them do their work. Uh, I'm, I'm in charge of the operation in terms of, of budgeting, finance, provide some leadership and direction in terms of long-range planning, strategic uh, planning, the direction we go in the future, how we interface in this telecommunications world, in this rapidly changing telecommunications world. We have uh, several departments, programming, promotion, engineering, production, uh, development, the fundraising end, and we have uh, extremely capable managers in charge of all of those departments. So it's basically those people who work behind the scenes on a day-to-day -day <coughs> basis that really make the operation go and, and become a success. What, what is one of the things that you th consider most important or a highlight in your experience at KSPS? Well, it, it's hard to pick out one, but for me personally, it's been the, uh, the ability to grow with the operation. I started in 1967. I was a student, a part-time student, volunteering. So the, uh, the real imp uh, impact on me has been able to grow and move through the ranks and become manager of this station, which I knew very little about when I first uh, began. But I think in terms of overall accomplishments of public broadcasting, it's, it's the cards, it's the letters, it's the comments that we receive from individual viewers who tell us really of the impact that we make on their lives on a day-to-day -day basis. Bill, how about you? What do you do at the station, and what is one of those things that you can remember that was especially important to you? Well, my uh, title is Director of Programming and Operations, and uh, basically I am in charge of uh, acquiring and scheduling the programming and in charge of uh, the people who actually put the programs on the air as well as uh, the production department, which uh, we produce a lot of uh, local programs as well as other production things that we need to get done in the way of, of tasks and that sort of thing. So uh, a lot of the times we ever talk about programming as being the, the heartbeat of 
of our station, which uh, that's why people watch us, is because of the programs. And uh, that's been a very integral part of my life at the station for the last uh, 10 years at this point in time. I agree with Claude in, in that uh, when I first joined the station in uh, November of 1969, it was a job. And through the years of being there, it has grown from that job to knowing the impact, as he said, that people feel about public television and that you get yourself from being there these years and believing in the service that we provide, that it is important and that it means something to people. And that's uh, really probably the most heartwarming uh, thing as far as I'm concerned of how I have made an impact on, on the broadcast world and I enjoy that part of it. Does it feel a little bit like a person sitting down to a smorgasbord for a program director? Uh, you it, have a lot of things to choose from and you have to decide what you're going to present? That's probably one of the uh, great things about public broadcasting over the last 10 years where I've, I've seen it grow from uh, some programs to many programs. The old uh, cornucopia to say that we have a programming out there is large. There's uh, a lot to choose from, there's a lot of interest and a lot of programs and likes that our viewers have and that's one of the things that we also uh, consider to be a benefit as well is that we are servicing the people that we broadcast to so when they have ideas we like to listen to those and as well go out and look for those programs if we can acquire them we really try to do that and Ron how about you I know finances are a very important part of any program uh, what have you done and what are some of the accomplishments that you feel have taken place during Well, it's not years. what I've done, but it's what the Friends of Seven have done. And that is, uh, when the station first started, it was thought of primarily as an educational station. As time went on, we realized more and more that uh, it's more than an educational station. It's uh, entertainment. It's so many other things. And the people uh, who uh, were running the station realized it was going to come a time when uh, more volunteers were needed, uh, when uh, finances were going to have to become greater and they knew that this would take the help of citizens. And so a citizens group was formed, there were about seven or eight of us when we first started. Uh, that grew and grew and it was a great thing. We thought, boy, if we ever had a thousand members in this thing, it would be <laughs> utterly fantastic. Well, now we've got 60,000 members. And the reason there are so many members and so on is to, because of what these gentlemen have done and what they've done with that station. The reason, I, reason that uh, we're able to do that is because their work has produced outstanding programming. Uh, we have people who love to help, you know, people line up to do volunteer work, to answer phones, or whatever it happens to be. And uh, when it comes to contributing of uh, money, all you have to do is listen to what goes on uh, on air, and you know how well people respond. And we owe a great deal of, to our friends in Canada who account for a large percentage of the money that we have. So the friend's job is to be there and help, uh, provide money, uh, come up with volunteers, and do everything we can to support the station. Claude, we know that there's a, a slot for all types of uh, communications and uh, particular uh, in the whole telemedia world. Uh, PBS has a very special slot that's different from commercial television and so forth. Would you share with our viewers uh, what you consider some of the real merits of having public uh, broadcasting? Well, I think the strength of, of public broadcasting is to provide a program service and a strand of programming that just isn't available uh, elsewhere. We don't necessarily have to be concerned about uh, audience size, about ratings, about reaching mass audiences with a particular program. You can narrow in on a specific need or interest within the community or the region that you're trying to serve and you can broadcast to it. And that's uh, especially meaningful. There are a number of things that we do that are, that are more than just broadcasting, more than what a station, more than what you as a viewer would see on the air the behind this thing, the scenes things that we are involved with, the, the K through 12 instructional programming that goes out via cable system in Spokane. There's the telecommunications aspect of our business that's changing and it, and it makes for some, some really unique services uh, provided into a community, into a region that you just wouldn't get anywhere else through any other kind of broadcast uh, operation. It really, you brought to my mind when you said you don't have to do like commercial TV, be so concerned about that wide uh, audience out there. For example, your children's programs. Mm -hmm. it's, I, I think it's been a tremendous breakthrough in this country with programs like Sesame Street and teaching. Uh, you've almost been a partner with something like Head Start, helping mm -hmm. uh, individuals along. So uh, I, I also hear you saying that Channel 7 has been very willing to do those local things that need to do with the school district and your affiliation with them and some local programming you produce. I know Bill Stanley's done an outstanding job in doing some of that uh, productions for you. And then you also have all the national programs. So you're multifaceted in that way, aren't you, over this 25 years that you've been operating? 
Yes, and we've seen a considerable growth and even some peaks and valleys in what we've been able to do locally. When Bill and I both started at the station uh, many, many years ago, we did an awful lot of local production. Uh, budget cuts force you to eliminate some of that. And now over the last several years, we've been able to, to increase the amount of production we've done and really target it to some of the specific community needs, the outreach needs, reaching into areas with some real special programming and address some unique uh, community needs and re that really make us an integral part of, of the community and the region that we serve. <clears throat> Bill, all these years I've known you, the 18 years that I've known you, certainly you've been on the front lines at, at Channel 7 and, and helping with the production and, and you're in charge of programming. Would you share with our viewers over this 25-year period what you've seen uh, or, or the evolution of the programming and how it is different today than it was, say, 25 years ago? That's a good question because uh, we continually get asked uh, from viewers to bring back some of the older programs, especially like Masterpiece Theater, some of the earlier dramas uh, that we're on because they really enjoyed Upstairs, Downstairs, uh, the first Churchill's programs like that. Uh, that was good programming and there's good programming now where uh, obviously the technique and uh, the ability to produce and internationally do a lot more uh, is very important to public broadcasting and what we've been able to, to bring forth. Uh, I think probably the, the expansion of pro production as well as programming has, has caught on and gone different ways because of the, uh, the technical things, the cameras. We've gone from film to videotape to, to big cameras to small cameras, so we are able to do a lot more in a quicker time perhaps with uh, lighter equipment, different equipment, as well as go across the world and bring things to, to people that uh, normally they wouldn't be able to have a, a chance to see or uh, go to in their own community. Uh, and public television that way I think probably has has made it easier for people to grab a hold of culture uh, mm -hmm. other kinds of programming as well and just to uh, make their life that much better and the fact that you don't uh, insert commercials all throughout the programming you actually have much more time on uh, on air that's that the content of the programming itself isn't it that's that's a big plus and that's probably one of the things that viewers will comment about that uh, they like public television because you don't have commercials, you don't have interruptions in your programs. I can sit down for an hour and watch, <coughs> basically it's 58, 45 uh, is total time within an hour that we show a program, or a 30 minute program is 28 minutes and 45 seconds. But yeah, there are no interruptions, uh, and that, that's a big plus, and that's one of the selling points of public broadcasting over these many years. I want to take this opportunity to show this magazine, it's uh, very well known in uh, Channel 7 circles, it's called the Preview Magazine, and this particular issue I want to show because it is the one that uh, recognizes the 25th year uh, of your programming. And I would recommend that. I know Ron would, would join me in this. The, the Friends of Seven uh, all get this magazine for, because of their, each month, uh, their contribution. For a basic donation. For a basic <laughs> donation. And it's absolutely outstanding because it tells you by the hour, each day, what okay. is on. And then also some articles and letters to, I call them letters to the editor and so forth. And Ron, I'd like for you to maybe take this opportunity to join back in the conversation in relation to this magazine and, and tell our viewers uh, not only are we celebrating 25th years, but it is strong because of that financial contribution and how they can become involved and how publications such as this okay. one is so helpful. Uh, it's very easy to become <laughs> involved. There's two things. If you'd like to be a volunteer, all you have to do is call the station. Uh, and our uh, people will be more than happy to have uh, find out what you like to do, the kind of activities you like to take part in. We have something for everybody up there uh, if they want to do that. If you'd like to make a financial contribution, you don't have to wait for a pledge night. Uh, we'll be more than happy to accept contributions. I think I should say the reason, and, and we have marvelous reception. Uh, the people on the staff that handle the, the fundraising are do a wonderful job at it. We try to do it in such a way as to uh, make it platable. And the other is we have thing is that we have a marvelous thing to give to. The programming is wonderful, and that's why we have our friends. Uh, that's why people are so happy to contribute. It's the quality of the programming. So the quality of the programming is number one, and second, we have people who are very adept at working with the public and knowing how to uh, convince them that they should become a part of our uh, Friends of Seven, but it's very easy to help. And you've made me think of something that I really want to ask Bill <laughs> also, since Bill is Director of Programming from the national list of programs that you can get. You obviously can't have them all uh, because of the expense and all. I guess I have a two-part question. One is I think it's really important to let our viewers know that they are expenses. And would you give us some idea of the kind of dollars we're talking about? And then what are 
the processes that you use to try to select between all the excellent choices that you have. Okay. Uh, looking at my programming budget for the year, I spend probably close to a million dollars in program acquisitions as well as the uh, membership to uh, PBS mm -hmm. and other uh, parts that come to play with public broadcasting as a whole. Uh, there are a lot of choices out there and a lot of uh, programs to choose from. During the course of the year, public broadcasting offers to us on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night what they call core programs. So the reason that we air Masterpiece Theater and Nature on Sunday night is because that's the way the schedule's set up. We go by that national schedule on each one of those evenings. The other nights we have the option, obviously, to do different programs, and those are acquisitions usually that are placed in there. And that's what uh, my main course of the job that's the fun part is to to take a look, and people think, well, gee, you're on television, you watch TV, and you must enjoy that. And it, there's nothing worse than having to go to a screening session and sit down for eight hours in one day and watch 50 programs and pieces thereof and try to make selections as to what people want to see. So through that, that's one of the great things that's happened over the last 10 years because that we have so many people who believe in public television and are willing to give the $30 a year we have that money building all the time that allows us to go out and buy more programs to be more diverse in the programming that we do collect and put on the air and so we're giving more people a different look of different kinds of programs which is really great so everything from uh, Doctor Who to dramas to uh, to movies and musicals they're all there and it's a great mix we can't satisfy everybody we know that we've uh, certainly may try to think we're doing so but it just doesn't happen that way so there's hopefully something there for everyone but all those components of come together yeah. to make the magic that I think that happens at Channel 7. Janelle Burke. I'd like to follow up a little bit on what Tony was just talking about. We're talking really about the audience that you're serving. Uh, Claude, how do you decide what kind of an audience you want to play to as opposed to perhaps the other television stations that might be of a commercial nature? How do you decide what audience you're trying to reach? Well. Uh, when we do local, pro I guess we leave much of that uh, decision-making up to the national level when, when, when we fund programs that go into the national pipeline. Uh, I mean, you, t you take for granted that a civil war is going to reach a certain audience, but you, you take a gamble and a risk. Is that the production technique, the format that will be successful? Those decisions are, are, are kind of left up to others. But on a local level, uh, Bill uh, and I and, and uh, his assistant r really take a look at what's going on in the community when we do local programs or where are their needs even even what needs aren't being met uh, with the national schedule uh, one of the one of the programs that is particularly unique and sometimes brings us in for uh, comments and, and praise uh, both positive and negative is the Lawrence Welk show uh, gee I watched that 15 20 years ago why is it on it's just da 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 but but Bill and, and the, the, so we have, have really looked and said that's an unserved audience uh, in television now. That provides just some good, basic entertainment that was there many, many years ago. But as the population progresses and ages, that, that age grouping will never go away. Uh, there's an unmet need there. And we do that, and, and Bill in particular, with, with other kinds of programs that we get involved with. Where are some needs that are unmet uh, on the national level? Uh, is it some of the needs are unmet just because there are commercial interruptions from another format on commercial television? Perhaps we provide a similar program strand, but ours is in a non, uninterrupted, non-commercial sense. So it's, it's looking at, at what really are some unmet needs. I want to ask you, too, about telecommunications, mm -hmm. because that's a very big area, and I think it's going to be a, a, a bit much bigger area in the future. What really does that mean, and can you explain to laymen watching the show what's happening? Well, to, to me in telecommunications, it means that the ability to reach people uh, in their homes, in other places, in other, in other centers using telecommunications technology. Uh, voice, video, audio, data transmission, pictures with, 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 with special strands of programming as well. A lot of what we will be involved with in the future will not involve an off-air broadcast signal, but we will use the ability to send pictures and sound uh, through the air or through fiber optics or uplink to, to satellites and downlink again to meet specific needs of, of communities, of business, of industry, of education. 
in a non-broadcast sense. So that's what we mean in terms of telecommunications and, and technology. So eventually someday a business will be able to conduct a meeting in two different locations, one in Seattle and one in Spokane, for example, and they'll be able to be talking back and forth with mm -hmm. each other through the telecommunications medium. Correct, and we're doing some of that now, meeting the, the needs of business and industry through, through downlinking through telecommunications satellite technology. We're in Washington, D.C. A number of, a great deal of our communication with PBS is taking, taking place through telecommunications and satellite now. They want to talk to all of the programmers all at once or show them everything that's going on. They will uplink it, downlink it, so the, tele so the programming staff can be in their individual stations and uh, not have to, uh, to uh, undergo days of, away from the office with travel and those kind of expenses, so reaching us at our place of business. Uh, using telecommunications to keep us at our site, save some monies, but yet expose us to the business, the industry that's going on. And Bill, just very quickly, um, I think what I heard you have heard you saying all day today is that it's balance in the programming selection. Is that a, a correct way to say that? Probably the, the word is variety or alternative. Uh, we've always okay. talked about uh, public broadcasting being alternative programming to commercial television. Uh, you see ballets on public television, you see opera, you don't see that on commercial TV. Commercial TV is happy that it's on public television because that's, that's a program strand that they won't get a lot of viewers for. But yeah, we have a niche of an audience that likes to watch that, a very uh, solid group of people who like to watch that and very adamant about it too. So we have small audiences but very devout individuals. Well, that's certainly uh, it's been the case of, of some studies that have been done in that. Uh, Ron, I'll come back to you again, too. I know you're out in the community and you work and uh, you're also in education. What are some of the reactions that you get uh, about public broadcasting and Channel 7 in particular, the kind of comments that are made to you that keeps that energy that you have to continue to be so supportive? Well, people like what they see. People appreciate that this is the one station that will give them, and this isn't knocking commercial, but gives them the things they wouldn't see anyplace else, the manner it's presented. Uh, it gives them something they could get n nowhere else presented uh, in the proper manner. And uh, it's diverse. It's diverse, and there's something there. Nobody, no one, I think, or very few, tune, on, tune in and watch all day long. But they know that throughout the day, there'll be things they like and they appreciate, and they know it's something special. And Claude, before we, we're going to have a special presentation in a moment, but another thing that I, might come to the mind of the viewers, you're talking about reaching out with this programming, and because of modern technology, you reach out a lot further than you used to. Can you tell us the, the viewing area and the, uh, how far it goes and, and now that you have cable and satellites and so forth? Uh, yeah, our basic viewing area is, is, is hubbed out of Spokane, but it extends as far north as, as Edmonton, Alberta to uh, south to uh, about Clarkston, Washington, on the uh, west to almost Wenatchee, Washington, and, and uh, to the east uh, to Missoula, Montana, uh, through a variety of off-air and, and cable coverage uh, configurations. We reach over 950,000 television households in that viewing area. Mm, that's really major, cover a tremendous area. I talked to Mayor Ray Stone of Coeur d'Alene before we did this program, and he was very delighted to issue a proclamation to congratulate you on the 25 years, and uh, we're very fortunate to welcome to the program today a member of the City Council, uh, Nancy Sue Wallace, who is representing the mayor in the city, and uh, Nancy, I do believe you have a presentation. Yes, I do. Thank you, Tony. Mr. Kistler, I'd like to present this proclamation to you, and I'd like to read it. Whereas KSPS Television has continually broadcast for 25 years to the residents in the Inland Empire, and whereas KSPS Channel 7 TV has provided programs such as NIC's Public Forum that are educational as well as uplifting in content, and whereas the citizens of Coeur d'Alene and throughout the Inland Empire have gained greatly from this public television venue, now therefore I, Mayor Raymond L. Stone, do hereby proclaim April 9, 1992 as KSPS Appreciation Day and urge all residents to continue to support public television in the Inland Empire. In witness thereof, therefore, I have hereunto set my hand and seal the great state of Cur city of Coeur d'Alene to be affixed this 6th day of April, 1992. Well, thank you very much. That's well, and I'd nice. like to say just um, one little comment. Um, as a mother, um, I had at one point smaller children, ages you know zero on up, and and for all the other mothers that have small children at home, I like to say that your television ch 
channel has saved our lives many days <laughs> <laughs> with the shows you provide during the day. So thank you very much. Well, that's awfully nice. We've, we've always enjoyed a unique relationship with Coeur d'Alene. Ron and I and Bill all go back to the days of, of our television auctions. We can remember uh, all the help that you've given us in soliciting auction merchandise out of the community of Coeur d'Alene and the surrounding area. So we've always enjoyed our service to Coeur d'Alene. We're glad the border is only there in, in name and we're able to serve this and so many other communities like it. It's, it's our pleasure indeed. Uh, Councilwoman Wallace, I hope you will take back yes. to the mayor our thanks and appreciation too from this program uh, for this very thoughtfulness because Coeur d'Alene has always felt that it was such an integral part of what goes on in Spokane and communications and particularly Channel 7. And again, I want to repeat what I said earlier in the program, uh, how outstanding the quality of programming is. And I was he really hearing that from Ron Miller a little early in the program. To also make this day special for you, we wanted to present something to your staff. You have a rather large staff, and uh, I've been over there a lot, and you've been very kind to let us produce programs there, particularly when we were remodeling our studios here. And I know a lot of those people personally, so we wanted to, something to, uh, for you to take back and present. And we have a cake that uh, is always a good way to celebrate a birthday. Um, I remember a few years ago we did the 20th birthday of the Idaho Human Rights Commission and we did a cake for them. We want to do the same thing for you at KSPS and they're showing the cake on uh, television now and we want to say happy 25th birthday to KSPS TV Channel 7, Spokane, Washington and Claude, I would like for you to take this back and share it with all your staff and uh, if you'd like to respond, we'd be delighted for you to do so. Well, we, we will take it back. Uh, it'll, it'll get back there. <laughs> Don't count on it. Trust me, <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard to believe in the pieces. Yeah. But, Tony, we've always enjoyed our unique relationship that we've had with this region and especially some of the programs and services that you provided for us, for our viewers. The excellent work that you've done out of North Idaho College, the support you've received from the administration, we'd like to say thanks for that. You've been able to bring us a perspective of Northern Idaho and a, and a perspective of of life and activity here and problems and concerns here that, it, that really embodies what public television is all about, that window to the world. And we really owe you an awful lot for bringing that perspective to our air and to share it with those over 950,000 television households that are out there. So we're really pleased with this relationship and, and uh, my thanks to the, to the city and to the mayor and to all of you for being a part of public broadcasting. In closing, I just want to say to all three of you and the rest of your staff and your board uh, that only because of Channel 7 have we in North Idaho been able for the only time in our history to broadcast a program weekly that goes beyond uh, our county throughout uh, the Northwest, even into Canada. And because of you, we've been able to share our guests that come from around the country and speak. And again, many congratulations on your 25th birthday. And we know the next 25 will be of the same quality. Again, congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you've enjoyed this program, and we again are so proud of KSPS TV, Channel 7 in Spokane, Washington, for the outstanding uh, productions and quality they bring to all your households. I uh, would like to invite you to be with us again next week at the same time. Until then, please have a good week. I am Tony Stewart. The North Idaho College Public Forum was videotaped live from the studios of Telemedia Services on the campus of North Idaho College for viewing at this more appropriate time. We invite you to join us again next week for another all-new edition of the North Idaho College Public Forum on this public television station.